very soon on my website. I'm gonna unveil the actual working prototype. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Justin Nelson's Projects. Just a quick impromptu video today. I just got back from my day job and of course the final pieces to one of my puzzles arrived at my doorstep today. So while I open these, in short, I will explain. What I'm building is a simple one-way level shifter. If you've ever worked with LEDs, the level shifter allows you to run these five volt LED strips on a 3.3 volt microcontroller such as an ESP32 or even a Raspberry Pi. I'm not gonna give it all away just yet. See, every time I've had to do a project involving LED strips, specifically these RGB individual addressable LED strips like the Hyperion project for the TV, my scrolling marquee, all that kind of stuff, I needed some kind of level shifter. The ones you can buy, don't be fooled, most of those are made for I squared C. I squared C is a slow, protocol it's not fast enough to keep up with these leds those don't work and they're bi-directional we only need one direction the leds aren't talking back to the microcontroller so the way i've been doing it is i just incorporate a comparator an lm393 dual comparator specifically just because i've got them lying around so i finally broke down and ordered from jlcpcb not a sponsor not yet but uh you know hey if you guys are watching this is the first prototype. I've got a slightly better version. I'll show you a mock-up of that one that's on the way. But it's so small that the whole thing, once you put your wires on there, fits into a piece of heat shrink. Now, this is the Pi version. I'm making several versions. It's the same board. The only difference is the Pi version has a five-pin DuPont connector. So you've got your positive, your negative, skip two pins, and then that is GPIO 18. That feeds the level shifter, and the level shifter then feeds the LEDs with their data. But the cool part is the LED strip feeds five volts to the Raspberry Pi. So one cable solution for the whole thing. That'll be in my Hyperion update video coming very, very, very soon, I promise. But this has multiple uses. Let's say you're working on an ESP project and you're just counting on the fact that sometimes you can get away with running 3.3 volts on a five volt LED strip. Sometimes you can, but it's not that reliable and it's uh, very subject to interference. So I ordered a bunch of these guys right here, just a male and a female. These will go in line with your current project. So you'll have two of these, one little circuit board, heat shrink. You can just stick it in line and eliminate those interference issues you were getting before. I bought 50 pairs, so I can make just simple inline ones. You put on your existing LED project that's giving you issues with interference. But if you're getting just random flashes of light on your LED strip, it's possible it's that 3.3 volts is not quite enough to drive the LED strip correctly, especially if you've got any kind of wire run. Now, my first variation, this is the Pi version again. My first variation, it's just a tiny piece of a circuit board with an LM393 and a handful of resistors. Works like a charm, but that's kind of hard to sell. This, I think, might sell a little better, but one of the things I've been waiting on, tell me it didn't come in this giant box, because it's like the smallest thing I ordered. Yeah, it came in this giant box. <laughs> okay, so this is transparent heat shrink tubing. The reason I want the transparent is I think it'll look cooler instead of just seeing this black what's under there kind of thing you're actually gonna be able to read the PCB. I just thought it would look a lot neater. So I've got a long day ahead of me assembling various versions. I wanna make the Pi version specifically for Hyperion type projects, things like that. Then there's the inline version, basically just a male and a female LED connector that you can put in line with any LED strip. And then I want one more version where one side only has a data and a ground, just the white and the green for any other projects. You can plug it into your breadboard, You can plug it into an ESP32, ESP01, or ESP8266. So without giving everything away, these will be for sale very soon on my website. I'm gonna unveil the actual working prototype in the next video, the Hyperion 2.0, I'm calling it, update video, where I do my bedroom TV. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of that stuff, and I will see you on the next one. Now to organize all this stuff. <laughs> uh, my coffee table has turned into Frankenstein's workshop.